Samson, a man of unparalleled strength, chosen by God to deliver Israel from the oppressive grip of the Philistines. His story is one of the most intriguing and controversial in the Bible, full of twists, turns, and lessons that still resonate with us today. You see, the Israelites were in a desperate situation, crying out for a savior, and that's when God set Samson apart, even before his birth. But here's the thing, Samson's life was far from perfect, and his journey is a roller coaster of triumph and tragedy that will keep you on the edge of your seat. So, there was this Israelite couple, Manoah and his wife, living in a time when the Philistines were really giving the Israelites a hard time. I mean, we're talking some serious oppression here. The Israelites were desperate for someone to come along and give them hope, to free them from the Philistines' iron grip. And that's when something amazing happened. You see, Manoah's wife couldn't have children, but one day, an angel of the Lord appeared to her with a mind-blowing message. This angel told her that she was going to have a son, and not just any son, but a special one who would begin to deliver Israel from the Philistines. Can you believe that? I mean, here's this woman who thought she'd never be a mother, and suddenly an angel shows up and tells her she's going to give birth to a hero. But wait, there's more. The angel also gave Manoah's wife some specific instructions. He told her not to drink any wine or eat anything unclean because her son was going to be a Nazarite, dedicated to God from the womb. Now, being a Nazarite meant following some pretty strict rules. No alcohol, no haircuts, and definitely no touching dead things. It was a serious commitment, but it also meant that Samson was set apart for a special purpose. When Manoah heard about this incredible encounter, he wanted to know more. So he prayed for the angel to come back and give them more details about how to raise this special child. And you know what? The angel did come back, appearing to Manoah's wife again while she was out in the field. Manoah wasn't there at first, but his wife quickly got him, and they both listened carefully to the angel's instructions. Manoah, still wanting to make sure they got everything right, asked the angel to stay while they prepared a young goat for him. But the angel told them to offer the goat as a burnt offering to the Lord instead. As the flames from the offering blazed up from the altar, the angel did something incredible. He ascended in the flames, right before their eyes. Manoah and his wife were blown away, falling to the ground in awe. They realized they had seen God face to face, and they were both pretty terrified. But Manoah's wise wife reminded him that if God had wanted to kill them, he wouldn't have accepted their offering or told them such wonderful news about their future son. And so, with a mixture of fear and excitement, they waited for the birth of their promised child. In time, Manoah's wife gave birth to a son, and they named him Samson, just as the angel had instructed. From the very beginning, it was clear that God's hand was on Samson's life. The Bible tells us that as Samson grew up, the Lord blessed him, and the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him. It was the start of an extraordinary journey, one that would be filled with incredible feats of strength, daring battles against the Philistines, and some pretty dramatic twists and turns along the way. As Samson grew, it became clear that he was no ordinary man. The Bible tells us that as Samson grew up, the Spirit of the Lord began to stir him, and that's when things started getting really interesting. One of the first times we see Samson's superhuman strength in action is when he's on his way to Timnah to meet his future wife. Out of nowhere, a young lion comes roaring at him, ready to attack. Now for most people, this would be a terrifying situation, but not for Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him, and he straight up tore that lion apart with his bare hands, like it was nothing. He didn't even have a weapon, but he made quick work of that lion. Later, when Samson went back to Timnah to marry his Philistine bride, he found something pretty surprising in the lion's carcass, a swarm of bees and some honey. So, being the clever guy he was, 
Samson scooped up some of that honey and shared it with his parents, but he didn't tell them where he got it from. This experience even inspired Samson to come up with a riddle for his wedding feast, which ended up causing some serious drama with his Philistine guests. But Samson's lion-slaying feat was just the beginning. Fast forward a bit, and we find Samson in Ashkelon, where he killed 30 Philistine men and took their clothes to pay off a debt. You see, Samson had a bit of a temper, and when he found out that his wife had been given to another man, he went on a rampage. He caught 300 foxes, tied their tails together in pairs, put torches between their tails, and set them loose in the Philistines' grain fields and olive groves, burning everything to the ground. Talk about a fierce reaction. But perhaps one of Samson's most legendary feats of strength happened when he was surrounded by Philistines in Lehi. The men of Judah, afraid of what the Philistines might do, actually handed Samson over to them, bound with ropes. But when the Philistines came shouting in triumph, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson once again. He snapped those ropes like they were nothing and found a fresh jawbone of a donkey lying there. He grabbed that jawbone and started swinging, and get this, he killed a thousand Philistine men with that jawbone. A thousand men, taken down by one man with a donkey's jawbone. It's the stuff of legend. But here's the thing about Samson. Even though he had this incredible, God-given strength, he was far from perfect. Despite his incredible strength and divine calling, Samson had a weakness, women. And this weakness, combined with his rebellious streak, led him down a path of disobedience and moral decay. It all started when Samson went to Gaza, a Philistine city, and spent the night with a prostitute. Now, for a man who was supposed to be set apart as a Nazirite, dedicated to God, this was a pretty big no-no. But Samson didn't seem to care. He was more interested in satisfying his own desires than following God's commands. Word got around that Samson was in the city, and the Philistines saw their chance to capture him. They surrounded the place and waited by the city gate all night, planning to kill him in the morning. But Samson, being the strong man he was, didn't let that stop him. In the middle of the night, he got up and tore the city gate doors right off their hinges, posts, and all. He put them on his shoulders and carried them to the top of the hill near Hebron. It was an incredible display of strength, the kind of thing that would be impossible for even the strongest man today. But here's the sad part. Even with all that strength, Samson was still weak when it came to women. He fell in love with a woman named Delilah, who lived in the valley of Sorek. The Philistine leaders, seeing an opportunity, went to Delilah and offered her a huge sum of money to find out the secret of Samson's strength. They wanted to know how they could overpower him and tie him up to torture him. Delilah, being the manipulative woman she was, started pestering Samson, asking him over and over again to tell her the secret of his strength. At first, Samson tried to throw her off, telling her that if he was tied up with seven fresh bowstrings or new ropes, he would become as weak as any other man. But each time Delilah tried it, Samson easily broke free. Finally, after Delilah had nagged him day after day, Samson gave in. He told her the truth, that his strength came from his hair, which had never been cut because he was a Nazarite from birth. If his head was shaved, he would lose his strength and become as weak as any other man. And that's exactly what happened. Delilah lulled Samson to sleep on her lap and called for someone to shave off his hair. When the Philistines came rushing in, Samson didn't have his usual strength. The Philistines captured Samson, gouged out his eyes, and put him to work grinding grain in prison. It's a pretty grim picture, isn't it? Samson, the man who once had the strength to tear a lion apart with his bare hands, reduced to a blind prisoner, grinding grain in a Philistine prison. And it all started with him turning his back on God. You see, when we start to prioritize our own desires and passions over our relationship with God, 
we open ourselves up to all kinds of trouble. We become vulnerable to the enemy's attacks, just like Samson did when he fell for Delilah's charms. And before we know it, we can find ourselves in a place we never thought we'd be, spiritually weak, blinded by our own sin, and trapped in a prison of our own making. It's a scary thought, but it's a reality that we see played out all too often. When we remove God from His rightful place in our lives, when we start to chase after our own pleasures and priorities instead of seeking His will, we set ourselves up for disaster. The Bible warns us in James 1 verses 14 to 15, but each person is tempted when they are dragged away by their own evil desire and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. That's exactly what happened to Samson. His own desires and passions led him astray, and before he knew it, he was caught in a web of sin that ultimately led to his downfall. He lost his strength, his sight, and his freedom, all because he chose to turn away from God. But here's the thing, Samson's story doesn't end there. Even in his darkest hour, even when he had hit rock bottom, God was still there. He was still ready to extend his grace and mercy to Samson, just like he is for us. The Bible tells us in Lamentations 3 verses 22 to 23, Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. No matter how far we've fallen, no matter how much we've messed up, God's love and compassion are always there for us. He's always ready to forgive us and restore us when we turn back to Him. But even in His darkest hour, God hadn't given up on Samson. As he sat in prison, Samson's hair began to grow back, a symbol of his renewed connection with God. Sometimes, it takes hitting rock bottom to realize how much we need God in our lives. Samson was ready to turn things around, to repent and be restored, and God was right there waiting for him. After all the mess-ups, all the disobedience and moral failures, you might think that God was done with Samson for good. But that's not how our God works. He's a God of second chances, a God who can take even the most broken stories and weave them into something beautiful. So, there's Samson, a prisoner of the Philistines, blind and weak, grinding grain in their prison. But then, the Philistines decide to throw a big party to celebrate their victory over Samson and to praise their god Dagon. They bring Samson out to entertain them, to make a spectacle of him. But little do they know, God's not done with Samson yet. The Bible tells us, in Judges 16.28, Then Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord God, please remember me, and please strengthen me only this once, O God, that I may be avenged on the Philistines for my two eyes. Even in his weakened state, even after all his failures, Samson turns back to God. He asks for one more chance, one more moment of strength to fulfill his purpose. And God, in his incredible grace, grants Samson's request. Samson pushes against the pillars of the temple, and with a mighty crash, the whole thing comes tumbling down. Samson defeats more Philistines in his death than he did in his entire life, and he fulfills his God-given destiny to begin the deliverance of Israel from Philistine oppression. It's a stunning display of God's redemptive power. Samson's story could have ended in failure and disgrace, but instead, it ends in victory and purpose. And it's all because of God's incredible grace and mercy. You see, Samson's story teaches us some powerful truths about God's character. It shows us that no matter how far we've fallen, no matter how much we've messed up, God never gives up on us. He's always ready to extend His forgiveness and grace to us, even in our darkest moments. The Bible puts it this way in Romans 5.8, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Even when we were at our worst, even when we were living in full-blown rebellion against God, He still loved us enough to send His Son to die for us. That's the kind of love and grace that Samson experienced, 
and it's the kind of love and grace that's available to us today. Samson's story also reminds us that it's never too late to turn back to God. No matter how far we've wandered, no matter how much we've wasted our potential or squandered our purpose, God is always ready to welcome us back with open arms. Just like the prodigal son in Luke 15, we can always come home to our Heavenly Father, and He will run to embrace us with love and celebration. And finally, Samson's story shows us that God can use even the most broken people and the most messed up situations for His glory. Samson was far from perfect, and his life was full of mistakes and failures. But in the end, God still used him in a mighty way to accomplish his purposes. The same is true for us. No matter how unqualified or inadequate we feel, no matter how many times we've messed up or fallen short, God can still use us for his glory. He's the God who specializes in using broken people to do beautiful things. So, if you're feeling like your story is too messed up, like you've fallen too far or wasted too much time, just remember Samson. Remember that God's grace is bigger than your mistakes and that he's always ready to give you a second chance. Turn to him in faith and repentance and watch as he begins to redeem even the most broken parts of your story for his glory. As the Bible says in 7 Corinthians 12, 9, but he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. In our weakness, in our brokenness, that's where God's power shines through the brightest. That's the story of Samson, and it can be your story too if you'll just let God write it. What do you think? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments. And as always, please like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon for more content just like this. Until next time.